Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISDQB Specialist Automotive Software Tester Certification. As a part of this tutorial, we are still in Chapter 2, that is Standards of e, &E System, and looking at the next topic, that is 2.2 ISO 26262 as in standard. Under this tab, in this, this topic, we are looking at the last topic of this segment, that is 2.2.5, application of content from CDFL in the context of ISO 26262. As a part of this particular segment, we will be understanding that how exactly some of the concepts which we have covered in the foundation level can be related to the domain-specific standards and can be utilized in practice when it comes to making use of some of the concepts. So ISO 26262 offers the test specific recommendations for his test activities in form of method tables. What is method table? We will be understanding in a short while. These tables can be found in the volume uh, 4, 5, 6 and 8 of the ISO 26262. Functional safety specific recommendations for the process and the activities. They also include the techniques to be used by the tester. So it's just not limited to the uh, you know techniques which are recommended as a part of the standard but also a lot of other things can be used as a part of it in this context the standard uses the term method instead of calling it as a test type or technique or approach they use the word method here and related to all applicable techniques or activities at this point the functional safety terminology differs slightly from the terms of the ISTQB when it comes to automotive industry and yes so we need to be uh, get, get familiar with these kind of standards to be used when it comes to domain specific uh, learnings for the tester the following methods of the ISO 26262 are of special interest which can be related from the point of the foundation to the automotive standards so let's look at that for example, test design techniques, which is the same from the foundation, could be your equivalence partitioning, boundary value analysis, street transition testing, or any such technique which you can make use of. Techniques of the test execution, uh, in general we have manual and automation, here you have simulation or prototyping of the part or the complete system. The test types, non-functional tests such as performance test, soak test, that is endurance or volume or any other thing. Test environment, which is your hill or vehicle, so we do have them as well. And static test techniques like reviews and static analysis can also be referred to one particular thing called as method. The next thing what we want to understand is a typical example of the method table. What exactly a method table is and how we can derive certain outcomes from the method table and how exactly the techniques are being elaborated to finally select one which is the most important to be used for any particular approach so first of all the definition of method table it defines the method recommended by the standards for each AC level where AC level stands for uh, automotive safety integrity level which we have covered in detail in the previous tutorial the table are always designed in the same structure as you see on the screen right now which talks about different methodologies and then in the columns you have different levels of the ACL starting with ACL A as low and ACL D as the highest and then we have the recommendations in different notations let's understand the table before we derive any outcome from there so here there are different notations as operators being used here for example we have plus we have double plus and we have O where plus is generally used for recommended and double plus is used for highly recommended and the O is used for optional as a part of method table we never use the any kind of notation or recommendation saying that it is not recommended okay because a technique can always be useful at any point of time when you know some of the techniques might be complicated to apply and you have a short duration of time then the optionals could be also helpful but at any point of time when you talk about the method table if you use the word not recommended it might create a negative impact on different practices saying that this technique is not at all useful so we don't use the word as not recommended or any notation instead you can make use of optional saying that we are not using it it's optional for us but probably for some other approaches it might be highly recommended as well so for each method we have different recommendation levels being defined based on the ACL level so here we also see that some of the methods are having an alternative 
for example, 3a and 3b, where method z is having two alternatives, z1 and z2, but you see the difference between them. The z1 has recommendation and highly recommendations at different levels, whereas z2 has highly recommendation only for a and b is recommended, whereas the other two are the optional. So this gives a very clear picture that if we have a differentiation between two different techniques or two different practices, we can select one based on the recommendations for different levels. Also, at some point of time, we do see that, uh, for example, method X and Y, we do not have an alternative. That means there is only one method which you can use, probably like it is equivalence partitioning or it is static analysis or just performance testing. So we don't have a choice for that. So we have to have only that method and then where it is the most recommended, that is highly recommended, we will refer to that. So we have to analyze a method table in such a way that it helps us to understand how exactly uh, what techniques and what approaches, what activity will be conducted with help of different methods. Further, yes, of course, for the example above, the following method derives as a proof of the requirement as per ACLC. So just take uh, ACLC as one of the example to see that what method will be used. So we will have method X as highly recommended, method Y as recommended, and out of method Z1 and Z2, Z1 is the highly recommended, so at least we can use that, whereas Z2 will not be taken into consideration as it is optional. Also, this method table derives exactly that what we should use, but sometimes if you think that anything which is not considered, being a tester, you can always contribute by selecting anything outside the table to the management. Saying that, there, there are other options or other methods which can be very helpful. And for that, the tester has to provide the necessary uh, supporting information in terms of usefulness and the suitability of that method over the other methods which are in the method table. So the tester must take care of providing necessary justifications that why that other method will be helpful for the uh, process or the activity which you're going to conduct uh, beyond the uh, methods which are mentioned in the method table and has to properly justify the same thing. So it is, it is just important to see how exactly we have related the things from the basic to the uh, domain specific standards and applying the same in the industry level practices for testing activities. We will understand more about this in the upcoming tutorials and chapters, so stay tuned for that. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. Is there anything else? Definitely drop a message and I'll be there to answer your queries. I'm always there to answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.